I'm Sina and I'm your Design Journey Art Class Expert for Drawing Animals. Fur and feathers are extremely detailed structures. But if you combine one simple painting technique and one simple drawing technique, you can draw feathers and fur in no time. In this session I will use watercolor paints, water brush set, together with a paintbrush, and some equipment from the drawing pencil set. And a pigment liner 0.5. In this exercise I will show you a technique of how to avoid too much details on feathers and fur. I start by drawing a bird wing and a furry part. And I want to show you how I fill these drawings with watercolors to create a simple texture. Lastly, I will also add a few details with a pigment liner. I start to draw a bird wing to practice the technique on. Pay attention to that the feathers on the wing are overlapping. Therefore, I'm drawing some parallel lines to help me place the feathers correctly and in the right direction. drawing the fur. I'm adding some correct lines to help simplify the surface of the fur. Slowly I draw the outer edge of the wing followed by a quick drawing movement on the inner part of each feather. This quick movement makes the feathers look more natural when they're overlapping as they kind of disappear into the wing. I take my pencil brush and paint the first layer of color. This layer I use to indicate where I want my shadows. I use quite a lot of water on my brush since I want an even and lighter shade for the first layer of watercolor. If you use too little water and the color gets too dark, just add some more water with your paintbrush or try to soak it up with some tissue paper. When it's all dried up, I add a second layer which create a stronger contrast between light and shadow. I prefer to use the water filled brush for details because I think it's easier to control the amount of water on the fiber tip, as well as regulating the strength of the watercolor. The final layer of watercolor is some finer painting strokes with a water brush. I'm carefully selecting where I want to put these small painting strokes since I want to keep it as simple as possible. One advice is to place these smaller painting strokes closer to the shadows, or when two feathers meet, or when the fur is kind of bending outwards or inwards. use the pigment liner to add a few details, but still keeping it very simple by not covering all areas. And that's it! Now I will apply this technique to a polar bear and an arctic tern. 
When you draw animals, try to grasp their main shapes by looking at a reference photo, as shown in session 2. The arctic turn consists of a large oval form for the body, triangular shaped wings, a curved rectangle for the shorter tail feathers, and a couple of long parallel lines for the long tail feathers. Arctic tern is the longest migrating animal on Earth that we know of. Every year, this small bird migrates from Arctic to Antarctic just in a few weeks. And during their lifetime of over 30 years, this Arctic tern could potentially migrate distance from the Earth to the Moon six times. That's very impressive. I draw a large circle to indicate the size and the length of the polar bear, then adding main shapes for the head and the front legs. The straight line that goes from the front legs to the back part help me with perspective. The head and the front legs lie closer towards us on the ice. I'm outlining the wing and the fur with a 0.5 pigment liner. Just as I did in the exercise, I add some cracked lines to create the impression of an uneven surface. The layer of watercolor is a base layer. I leave the place I want to remain highlighted and create shadows on the feathers and between where the feathers overlap. For the fur I do the same, leaving the highlighted areas and create shadows along the cracked lines. Adding several layers of watercolors, you can control the color strength and create texture more easily. It is important to let the watercolor dry up before adding new layers, so you don't lose the control. Working in layers also prevent mistakes.
If you use a too strong color shade in the very beginning of your painting process, it is more difficult to correct. A thumb rule is to add details on the darkest shadow areas or areas close to the shadows. Remember to leave some of the highlighted areas without any texture. If not, you will lose the impression of highlights. When I'm done with the last painting strokes, I add a few details with a pigment liner. I'm trying to be selective. And my best advice is to not care too much where you place the details. Just draw them random places, but not overdo them. These pigment liners are waterproof, so they work perfect in combination with watercolors. I would love to see your results from this session. Feel free to use the hashtag MyDesignJourney on Instagram and share your artwork with us. The nature has a lot of inspiration to offer and by following simple steps you can draw animals in no time.